Previously, we had made a video that was the first of its kind, how to do IRL streaming, like in-person streaming, you have everyone around the same table. Seeing the response to that video made me want to make another one about what we wish we had known before we started streaming actual plays. Hello everyone, my name is Devin. I am the Dungeon Master here on Total Party Chill. I play the goodies and the baddies. Here are the things I wish I'd known before I started streaming Dungeons and Dragons and other actual plays. So first, we're Total Party Chill. This is our studio, we stream in person. We've grown from a humble beginning, play with celebrities. We've had uh, games that we played in front of live studio audiences at conventions. Heck, we even have our own theme song. So we've, we've found uh, what we consider like success and, and happiness with what we do with our actual plays and our stream. That maybe is a bit of a qualifier of like where this advice is coming from. There's a ton of videos online about like how to be a great streamer, but streaming for D&D is a lot different than it is for video games. So I hope you find a little bit of insight from what I have to offer. Now, small disclaimer, everyone's actual play streamed is much different, and so not everything is going to be applicable to you that was applicable to me. Regardless, this is just my advice. You don't have to take it. I'm not saying that this is the end all be all of what everyone needs to do to be successful on Twitch as an actual play streamer. But yeah, let me go ahead and just dive into it. Number one, have a dedicated Discord for your actual play. Wow. This probably seems obvious to a lot of you. It was not obvious to uh, us at all. We actually didn't know what Discord was when we started. Um, so one of the people that was watching this was like, hey, do you have a Discord? I was like, I don't know what that is. Here's why, a Discord is a great place to create that community of the viewers that you have and the people that are involved in the content you're creating. It seems very obvious to have a Discord now, but the reason I'm saying it is because we didn't think to have that. Having a way to connect with your community outside of just Twitch chat or YouTube's uh, lives chat is really important. And it's also good as a way of like, this is where your go lives go. This is where any news or changes go. Uh, it's a nice kind of hub of like where your community's conversations are happening. Next, less is more on screen. Oh my goodness, I've seen so many actual plays that just have a thousand things on the screen. Character sheets, sponsors, animated follow icons, sub badges, character art, uh, things like a chat overlay, several titles, subscriber bar, bit bar, follow bar. These things only draw attention away from you and, and you playing the game. Try to figure out everything that's really important to have on stream. And I always think the players are the most important part. Um, and I think, you know, and if you're, if you're really focused on battle maps, maybe that should be the most important part. Remember, less is more. Next up, audio is key to good content. So we actually knew this going into it. We knew that audio was gonna be really, really important and it was the hardest thing we had to learn. If you watch our other video about how to stream all in the same place, kind of like how Critical Role does it, audio is definitely the hardest thing that you're gonna come across. We went through all types of microphones. We went from Audio-Technica uh, boom mics, you know, we had the Blue Yeti, we had lav mics. Uh, now we all use Rode Pod mics um, because they're great and they mix really well together. But again, audio is the hardest thing when it comes to an actual play. Now this is definitely not the most accessible part of actual plays. Good audio is expensive. You know, a mixer, an interface, uh, actual mics, they aren't cheap. You know, it also depends if you're doing this in person or remotely. Remotely means everyone needs a nice mic and that also might mean XLR, interface, mixer, etc. Or they're doing USB. I know that this isn't the easiest thing, but if you are looking to like upgrade anything, I would start here. Huge thing to remember is listen to great actual place and see how their audio sounds. And then without going live, record with your group, if you're doing remotely or you're doing it in person and play it back. Play with headphones, play it with a speaker, play it on your phone, play it a couple different ways and see how it sounds and see if it sounds good and see where the problems are. And then try to fix it from there. It's gonna take a lot of guess and check. It's gonna take a lot of tweaking, but that's the most important thing I think you should focus on as far as the quality of your stream. Uh, next up, don't do everything at once. I see a lot of streamers who are immediately trying to do five shows a week, that's five different games, and you know each have a different idea, and each have a different cast. Or, that's great, but if you're, if you're trying to lead this, you know, that's a lot to start with. You need to focus on just doing one thing really, really well, and then kind of grow from there. Uh, next up, don't go looking for sponsors. Um, I don't think a lot of people, when they first start out, need a sponsor. 
So I think it kind of puts you in a bad situation really early on to perform for a sponsor um, and then kind of be beholden to them, especially affiliate marketing. I think affiliate marketing is really bad for streamers because it doesn't give you a lot of benefits. You usually get like $2 on the sale. If you can't scale that, it, it doesn't make a huge impact for you. Instead of having to focus on a sponsor and promoting them, just focus on making great content. And as you grow, you will have more opportunities that come to you. And it, when you kind of get bigger and you kind of know your value, it's really easy to go out and seek out those sponsors. Next up, if you wanna monetize, be focused. I see a lot of streams that will sometimes ask you to hit their Ko-Fi, hit their Patreon, hit their Twitch sub. Find out like one way that you really want to kind of focus on the support you'd like to have from your community and drive people towards that. And the reason why you see a lot on, you know, Twitch, because it's very easy. People already have their uh, credit card info there. They already have everything connected there. So it's very easy to subscribe on Twitch. It's very easy to cheer on Twitch because your credit card and everything's already connected. So it's kind of built in and it's a fake currency. You know, it's like their own, you know, it's their, their cheers, their bits. It kind of, it's a psychological thing that Twitch does that makes it really easy for people to cheer and people to sub on Twitch. But of course, you're getting a much less cut than you would on something else. So things like Patreon, where you do get a higher cut, or Kofi, or Kofi, 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 Kofi. Uh, but things like Patreon, reoccurring, uh, very much like uh, Twitch. But figure out what works best for you and focus on promoting that rather than trying to promote everything. Uh, next up, don't spam. This one is, it feels obvious, but I see a lot of people do it. I see a lot of people that are part of Discord communities. You know, the only part that they're active with is in self-promotions, sharing their go live notification over and over again, sharing their YouTube over and over again. That's obvious to the community that's in there that you were not bringing back to the community and you were just there just to promote yourself. Promoting yourself is great, but promoting yourself as the only way that you interact with the community is not. So if the only reason you go onto Twitter is to promote yourself, to share your go live notification, people won't wanna follow you. If the only thing that you do in other people's discords is share your go live notification, people won't wanna click on it because you're not part of the community. So don't spam people, you know? Uh, be part of the community if you're gonna share. Next up, ask and you shall receive. If you're running a game of an indie publisher, it's okay to ask them like, hey, would you, would you share this tweet? Could we maybe get a few PDF codes or something like that? It's okay to ask for that. I mean, if you are playing a game and you do want to really promote, you know, a different publisher, things like that, it's fine to ask and it's fine to reach out. A lot of these publishers, they're really excited that people are playing their games. This is the same thing when asking people to play with you. If you have a show and there's like a streamer that you see, that you think is great, another AP player, another actual play, asking them like, hey, I would love for you to join at our table. A lot of these people are really excited to be asked to come and join at someone else's table and it's just a matter of asking them like, hey, would you like to do something with us? This is what we're playing. We'd love to have you as part of it. And I thought for the longest time, no one wants to do play with us. We're not big enough. We, you know, they probably think you know, that we're, we're not worth their time. And the tabletop RPG community is a community. And so people are really excited to play with each other and to be a part of each other's games and a part of each other's projects. Uh, next up, edit your videos. Stop uploading your video as it is with the breaks and the countdown, everything to YouTube. Edit your videos and upload those. A lot of actual plays, you're gonna take a break. You're gonna have a countdown timer as well. Those should be edited out and then your 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 tighter video should be added to YouTube. The thing is, if someone is interested in watching you, because most people are going to find you that don't find you on Twitch, are gonna find you on YouTube if you're uploading your videos there. The, if they have to scroll through 20 minutes of countdown, they're already kind of annoyed because you're like, oh, where does this actually start? you're always more likely to find new viewers from people who find your YouTube content. So you should definitely be uploading content to YouTube. All right, everyone, that is it. I hope you found some of this useful. I hope you enjoy it. And I got one more for you. Uh, I thought of this literally as I'm editing the video and I want to make another. Don't wait for perfect. It doesn't have to be the best quality. It doesn't have to be the best video, the best audio. Um, it's more important to start making something and start getting something out than it is for perfection. For example, I wasn't incredibly happy with the video quality of this video up till now um, because I didn't have my light set up and all that, but it's fine because it's better to have something than to have nothing. Okay, those are the things that I wish I had known when I started streaming. I hope they're helpful to you. I hope you find some kind of value in them. Um, please, if there's something that you learned about streaming that you'd love to share with others, drop it in the comments. And if there's something you wanna know about it, please drop it in the comments as well. Maybe we'll make a video around that. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you next time.